When Senator Kamala Harris officially accepts the Democratic Party's nomination to be vice president, she will become just the third woman in American history on a major party's presidential ticket. The We Have Her Back campaign is working to fight any misogyny the senator might face. It's a group initiative led by representatives of Supermajority, Emily's List, and Time's Up Now. Supermajority co-founder and former Planned Parenthood president Cecile Richards spoke to CBS News special correspondent Alex Wagner for the Sunday's episode of The Circus. Mondale was behind when Ferraro became his running mate. Sarah Palin again was seen kind of as a Hail Mary pass. This time's different. Joe Biden's ahead, right? A lot of people say, I don't know, this is a high risk situation. I feel just the opposite. I feel like the excitement and energy among women in general is, of course, off the charts. Women are now, they've dominated the primaries this election cycle. Historic number of women running for office. The energy that I'm feeling out there in the countryside that we would now have the chance to elect a woman and have a government that begins to look like us, mm -hmm. I think it's going to energize all voters. The Circus airs on Showtime, which is a division of Viacom CBS, and we welcome Alex this morning. Thanks for joining us. Always. Great to see you, Michelle. Great seeing you. Even with an historic number of women running in the Democratic presidential primary, a man is still at the top of the ticket. So what does that signal about the views of women candidates? Well, look, it is true that none of those very uh, qualified women made it to the top of the Democratic ticket. But the, the reality is when you look at voting patterns, when you look at what happened in the 2018 midterms, when America sent a record number of women to Congress, you look at the excitement and the enthusiasm and the organization of women in the four years since President Trump was elected, we're, we seem to be, Michelle, in a different moment. And then if you look at the polling nationally, there is a chasm that has opened up between the two candidates. Women are breaking for Biden by up to 20 points, and that was before he announced Kamala Harris as his running mate. Now, if you look at early opinion polling from this week, it seems like his choice of Kamala Harris has the approval of a majority of the country. 60% of Americans approve of his choice of Kamala Harris, including, and this is the important part, 37% of Republicans. So, you know, the, the jury is still out, but I would say the trend lines towards Americans embracing a woman in a leadership role it seems to be going in that direction. Well, Senator Harris has spoken a lot about our personal story, her family life as a child of immigrants and her role as mamala, as she likes to term herself, uh, to her stepkids. What, what kind of impact does this have? So look, I think we're still writing the book on what it means to be a woman in power. The mamala story that you heard when the, pres the vice president uh, came and introduced uh, his running mate to the country earlier this week. That Mamala story is something that anybody on the campaign trail heard Kamala Harris herself tell in the fall, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't a very deliberate move on the part of the Biden campaign to try and show Kamala Harris as a multifaceted candidate. This is someone who's a tenacious litigator, but she's also someone who's cooking a Sunday meal. She's someone who's at all the swim meets. And I think that's indicative of the fact that we want to see women as people, I mean, fairly or unfairly, who can do many different things at once. They can be killer professionals, but they're also great on the domestic front. I'll tell you, Michelle, I was with Cory Booker, one of Kamala Harris's besties yesterday, and he's, <laughs> he spent time telling me the story about how he was, he, the bachelor, was trying to cook a pot of lentils, and he called his friend Kamala Harris, and she, she said, you know what, Cory, let's FaceTime. And she spent time with him on the phone, guiding him through her favorite lentil recipe and teaching him how to chop an onion. I promise I promise you, Michelle, we are going to hear that onion chopping story a lot between now and November. Yeah, he's an easy student. Uh, he, I, I, I don't understand uh, <laughs> whether or not he can cook, but yeah, easy student there. Well, President Trump has already been on the attack, called calling Harris nasty, a term he only seems to be using uh, for women. He also tweeted that uh, he would uh, get support from the suburban housewife crew. Uh, what, what is his strategy here? Yeah. <laughs> 
Look, I think Trump, in a lot of ways, is running the 2016 playbook. He's using a lot of the same rhetoric. He's going for the sharp sort of jugular attacks. I think it's a question about whether it's going to work. I interviewed Cecile Richards, the woman we heard from earlier in this tape, because she is working preemptively with a group of other women who have are all seasoned political veterans. They all head a, some of the biggest women's groups in the country. And they're saying, we are preemptively going to issue notice to media, to the public, to candidates. We see you and we are monitoring the ways in which you are talking about women. And we are developing a war room on our side to push back against what we see as misogyny and sexism. It's sort of born out of PTSD of the 2016 race and races thereafter, where they see women as not getting a fair shake. What I think you're seeing now is an expectation on the part of women and men to some degree that things are, could get ugly in terms of gender in this election. But the, the sort of operation, the behind the scenes war room is much more fired up and much more prepared than they were four years ago. So it'll be interesting to see how well these attacks on the part of Trump and his allies land. I have seen it in action and they are calling on their male allies in particular. Alex Wagner, thank you so much. Well, the newest season of The Circus returns this Sunday on Showtime at 8, 7 central with the stories behind the political headlines. And we'll have full coverage of the Democratic National Convention right here on CBS this morning. Our primetime coverage begins Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. 